<clears throat> good to see everyone on or see you on this uh, on this computer screen. Um, hope everybody can hear me okay, and uh, we'll get started. Um, well, it's uh, it's good to be back. Um, we have uh, we really had a good summer, um, and as best we possibly could, uh, try to have as normal a summer, summer school and fall as is possible given all the different COVID protocols. Um, when the guys first came back, you know, there was about a 28 day period of acclimation, uh, you know, different levels of quarantining and testing. Uh, one guy, one ball, one basket, one shooting machine. Um, and then we gradually worked our way through the summer to where um, we were able to begin to have more than one guy at, at a basket and have three guys at a basket. And then we started to be able to actually share a basketball. Um, and it was quite a process. Um, but I think the student athletes benefited and they were really, our kids were really patient uh, given the fact that they would love to have gotten going and played basketball and had it be back to normal. Um, we did great work in the, in the, in the weight room, my strength coach, Damon Davis, uh, through strength and conditioning. And as you guys know, we have a lot of new players and we have a lot of young players. So therefore I really think that they benefited and made progress physically through the challenges that we were facing through COVID. Um, our team has done an outstanding job and I'm sure there's many medical regulations, but what I can and can't comment on about how many guys have had it or haven't had it or everything about a testing program. But I can tell you that the vast majority of our team has not had it. That's probably some violation, um, which I think speaks loudly to the kids' discipline, their commitment to social distance, wear their masks, wash their hands, try to place themselves in as safe an environment as they can. That said, they could still do all the right things and still contact the virus. So for anybody that did the right things and got the virus, I'm not at all being critical, but, but I would just point out the fact that our kids have done an amazing job to stay healthy and we're grateful and we thank God for that. Um, so the NCAA, I think, did a good job this fall beginning to relax some of the uh, protocols. Um, we were in our pre-season when we started school and therefore it was eight hours of athletically related activity four on the court and four in strength and conditioning so if you went four times a week for an hour you went three times a week for an hour and 15 20 minutes it was enough and then after about three or four weeks of that they actually took us into a, a little bit of a two or three week interim period where we got to 12 hours not just eight including eight hours on the floor. Well, that meant two hours a day, four days a week. That was really good. And again, we were able to transition into a little bit more basketball. Obviously, we still maintain four hours of strength training and conditioning. So, and then obviously starting, I think yesterday, we then started, what would you call the first day of official practice where it's gonna work out to about five times a week, generally speaking between now and when our first game is. Our first game, based on all that we know, looks like November 25th in Orlando. Um, the exact makeup of the field, uh, the ex all, uh, 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 all the opponents, we've got some ideas, but I'm not prepared to actually uh, comment about them because I don't know that they've been released yet. Um, as soon as they are officially released, I'll comment on them. But that at least gives you an idea of between now and November 25th, when we, we get started. Um, before I talk about this year's team, I just wanna step back and talk a little bit about where our, our program is. Um, I am extremely proud and grateful of our coaching staff, our student athletes, our support staff, the administration at the university, our fan base, and just the Auburn family for, for giving our team and our program the opportunity to compete in the SEC. And, you know, when you're, when you're, when you're, before you move forward, you look back just a little bit. And obviously 
in recruiting, you know, we've got to be able to present a picture of who we are, who we've been, and who we want to try to be. So over the last three years, um, much to my, a little bit of my surprise, Auburn basketball has got the best road and neutral record in the SEC at 35 and 20. We are the best team over the last three years away from home. Now, the reason why I'm starting with that is it might be a surprise to some of you as, you, as we get a, a lot of credit for bringing a great home team. We get a lot of credit because we've got a, the best home court advantage in, in the SEC and one of the best in college basketball, thanks to our sellouts for six years. Uh, thanks for the, to the, the jungle and the incredible passion of our student body, to the pep band, the cheerleaders, the dance team, and of course, our student athletes for playing competitive, exciting basketball. But it might surprise you that we get the, we're the best team in the SEC away from home. We are also one of only four major college basketball programs to win 25 games in the last three years. The others are Duke, Kansas, Kentucky, and then Auburn. Um, that's that's tall timber. That's that's great company. Certainly, that's something we worked really hard to acquire. And then our non-conference record, we're 47 and five over the last three years, best in the SEC. Um, again, to the Austin Wileys and the Daniel Purifores and the Anthony McLemore's and the Samir Dowdy's and the Javon McCormick's and Jared Harper and Bryce Brown and Malik Dunbar and Horace Spencer. And, and, you know, I, I know I'm, I'm not trying to list everybody in Chumo Kiki and, 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 and the, the, the last few years, um, those guys have did obviously did a, did a great job. We got a whole new team now. We lost 11 players from a Final Four, and we lost our six best players from last year, Isaac Coro being my sixth for senior. Um, very excited about the future for all those guys. Javon is going overseas. Uh, he's got a contract. Uh, Danielle will be going overseas to play. Anthony is right now working for uh, uh, Regions Bank in Birmingham. I would imagine he's going to be a, a senior vice president in a year now. Um, uh, Samir uh, is, uh, and I should say about just about Danielle. Danielle's still awaiting the draft, and you know something could happen for him in, in here in this country, G League or, or the NBA. Samir, uh, Austin Wiley, obviously in the same positions, and we hope they hear something on draft day or get an opportunity to to, to make a team. And Isaac Coro, uh, you know, looks to be in the top ten of everything I've read, seen, talked to. Uh, with a chance to even get into the top five. So uh, happy for all those guys uh, as we as we move forward. Um, we have 12 guys on scholarship. Ten of them are underclassmen, freshmen, and sophomores. This is the youngest team I've had since I've been a Division I basketball coach. Um, the kids have been training really hard. I really like my team. I really like the effort. I like the competition. Um, um, I like the work ethic. Um, we have got a lot to learn. Uh, we have very little experience. Um, we're entering into a league this year that's returning a lot of good teams, a lot of good players. Uh, I think that the NBA draft being moved and pushed back has brought a lot of players back to the league that would have that either put their name in that would have stayed in had it been normal circumstances, but now. Many of them have come back to the league, which is going to make it obviously, you know, more challenging. And I think as you start to see uh, the, the, the league being picked by magazines or experts or coaches, I think you'll see Auburn someplace in the middle to the, to the lower half of the league as far as what uh, folks' expectations are. Um, I think I've talked enough. I'd love to answer questions that you have and certainly – you know, talk more about my, uh, about my players. Okay. Our, thank you, DP. Our first question will come from Mark Murphy. Yeah, Bruce, can you talk about the challenges of uh, playing good defense with such a young roster? Well, um, I would say that, Mark, that most kids come in and their offense is ahead of their defense. Um, they've worked, they've had good coaching. They've been in the gym. They've worked on their game. They got their stuff that they're good at. They try to stay away from the stuff they're not very good at. Um, but when it comes to a defensive standpoint, the complexities of the defense at the college and then the next level, the pro level, 
are, are much more intricate, much more demanded. There's a place that you're supposed to be at all times. And that's a really hard adjustment for young players to learn. Uh, we're drilling it. We're, we're, we're teaching it. We're watching it on film. We're practicing it. Um, and, and, you know, but obviously uh, it's a great challenge. It's just a, just a tremendous learning curve about what we're supposed to do on the ball, what we're supposed to do off the ball and how to react to all the different actions. And, um, but we've got, you know, we, we're going to have a good long preseason to, uh, to work on that stuff. The preseason will be uniquely challenged because uh, we won't right now. We don't have a fit. We haven't had officials yet for inter squad scrimmaging. Um, and uh, we doesn't look like we're going to have any exhibition games. Uh, doesn't look like we're going to have any uh, preseason games where you have private scrimmages against other teams. So, our first contest with officials could be November 25th in Orlando. Thanks. Our next question will come from Brian Matthews. Yes, coach, thank you for speaking to us. I uh, just want to ask you about the, the young man Powell. Um, how's he sort of fitting in so far and, and where do you see him playing for you guys this year? Well, Brian, he, uh, he's done well. Um, and, uh, you know, he was originally recruited to be sort of an off guard uh, because that's the position that he played most of the time in high school, but he actually played some point. And so we're allowing him to compete with Sharif Cooper and Terrell Jones and maybe even another player or two. Um, I'm, trying to, I, it's, I'm trying to give two or three or even four guys an opportunity to see who, you know, what that point guard position is going to look like. Um, so he's got more ball handling, decision-making, playmaking, reads out of ball screen ability than I thought he did. Uh, he's obviously a terrific shooter. He's got a really high basketball IQ. Um, he's been well coached. He's got good defensive fundamentals. Um, he's earned the respect uh, of, of his teammates and our coaches. And um, he has, uh, looks like he's almost completely overcome the injury of the groin injury that, that kept him out of uh, competing for a state championship in high school. And, and, and he probably would have been Mr. Basketball in the state of Kentucky had he had a, uh, had, he, had, he had a senior season. Um, and that recovery took place throughout the summer. He did not come back here this summer and, and he wasn't completely 100% ready, but he worked his way through this summer. Our trainer, Clark Pearson, our strength coach, Damon Davis, as well as the doctors and, uh, Justin have done a really nice job to the point where he's, he's good to go. Thank you, coach. Our next question comes from Thomas Murphy. Hey coach, with the updated heights and weights of the players coming out yesterday, several players have put on 20 plus pounds. Uh, what can you say about the focus and hard work all those players have put in during this unusual off season? Yeah, well, their coaches being overweight rubs off on their players. So I picked up the COVID-20 or 19, and I think some of those guys did as well. Um, I, I think it just speaks to uh, the, the work that um, that Coach Damon Davis does, our assistant coaches do, Holly, our nutritionist. Um, and and I do think it speaks to the importance of having those guys on campus this summer and and, and getting, getting back to school. Um, you know, it really hurt a number of players being gone March, April, and May. Uh, we were gone for three full months. We didn't get back till sometime in early June. And, um, and you could tell some of those guys come back, they'd lost a lot of weight. They'd lost a lot of strength. They'd lost a lot of skill level. And so you could tell the importance of being in school, just like the importance of being having a kindergarten or a first grader, the importance of being in school and to be able to attend and learn and, and eat healthy. And, um, our kids have, uh, have certainly benefited uh, uh, a, a great deal by that. Now we still got a few guys that are a little light in the shorts and need to continue to pick up some size and some strength. But you know, but overall, we've made some real good progress there, and, and the work ethic is is really been good. Our next question comes from Bill Cameron. Uh, Bruce, if you would, uh, you talked about the uh, the number of players returning in this league. The league really looks to be stronger and stronger every year, and I see that you're. You're picked seventh in one of the early uh, polls. Talk just talk about the strength of the league and, and how you use that uh, preseason prediction, if if you do at all, as a little uh, motivation. You know, I, I don't, I, I won't, I don't know that I'm going to use this much as motivation. I have an idea. Like I said, we're going to be picked in the middle to the lower half of the league. Um, 
because we're young and very inexperienced and not tested. Um, I like my personnel. I like our talent. Um, we've got just a ton to learn, ton of catching up to do, and we're going to have to get better throughout the season if we're going to be uh, a competitive team this year. We're going to be an NCAA tournament team this year. So there's there's you know more unknowns and more intangibles. I truly don't think it's going to be up mo about motivation. I, I just don't. Um, I haven't seen where the league is being picked, but if you look at some of the obvious choices of, say, uh, Tennessee or Kentucky or Florida, LSU, um, <clears throat> Arkansas, Alabama, I think I've just probably named six. Um, and <clears throat> there's somebody else that's pretty obvious that's, that's, that I uh, am missing. I had seven teams that were pretty, but anyways, uh, there's a lot of no-brainer picks in front of us just because of the quality of their, uh, the, the rosters, you know, that are returning. Thanks. Next question comes from Jordan Hill. Bruce, uh, given how unusual this offseason was and trying to get everything back uh, going, how important is player-led leadership this year, and especially with a team as young as you guys are, who are some of those guys you are kind of looking at to sort of step up there? Well, you know, the player leadership is everything, especially when it comes to winning championships. Coaches can lead and win games. But we can't lead a locker room to be a, a great team. That, that's got to come from within. Um, the leadership is, is a challenge because, um, you know, the returning players, let's say the, the most experienced returning players are Jalen Williams, uh, Devin Cambridge, Alan Flanagan. Those guys did not get a ton of reps last year. Uh, they've all got strong personalities and they all have the ability to lead, but they don't have a lot of experience. And then Tyrell Jones and, and uh, Stretch um, also, you know, have leadership ability. And, and, uh, um, and then you've got some talented freshmen that, that are going to be out there. Um, so it's something that I think is going to have to evolve, but, but not of any fault of their own. Leadership is, will, be, will be a challenge for us this year. Our next question comes from Justin Ferguson. Hey, Bruce, uh, going off of leadership, I think Jamal is the oldest player, at least the player on your team that's been around the longest. What have you seen from him uh, this offseason and his progression? Yeah, Justin, uh, Jamal's probably improved as much as anybody from last year to this year. Um, he's worked really hard. Um, his athleticism, his speed, his quickness, his ability to stay in front of you. I think he worked a lot with his dad and on his defensive slides and some of his mobility. Um He's, he continues to demonstrate that if he can see it, he's got a real good chance to make it. Uh, his in-between game has gotten better. Um, he does little things off the ball. Um, so I appreciate you bringing his name up on the heels of leadership because I would say that Jamal does have a chance to be, you know, one of our leaders. But I think it's so early that I don't, you know, I don't comment much on it because I, I just got to let it play out. I got to let it evolve and let those guys step up. But I definitely see Jamal having been a really improved player, uh, trying to carve out his niche on the roster uh, still and uh, his role. But but he's done, a, he's done a pretty good job stepping up. Okay, our next question comes from Tom Green. Hey, Bruce. Just looking at the roster, it looks like you guys have more length than you've had in some years past. Just how, how do you think that's going to kind of affect the uh, identity of this team this year compared to some of your more recent teams? Yeah, well, Tom, you know, I, I would think the length is great if we use it, um, you know, blocking shots, deflections, active hands. Could it help us in pressure? Could it help us as we try to extend defensively a little bit? Uh, can we turn some people over a little bit more? Uh, might it lead to some zone uh, that we, we could play um, uh, as, as a more of a primary defense? Uh, I wish trapping uh, was, was still allowed in the game of basketball. It's just so hard to trap legally uh, without violating the rules right now um, uh, with, you know, with invading somebody's space. Um, so, so uh, yeah, we, you know, again, but if a guy is six, nine or six, eight and really long and he closes out with his hands down, he becomes six foot pretty fast. So again, playing with those hands up and out away from our body, is, is something that we've been we've been drilling and, and, and hope to use as a strength. Our next, next question comes from Nathan King. Hey, Bruce. Hey, thanks for talking with us. I wanted to ask about Devin Cambridge, you know, kind of being one of those guys that wants to take on a leadership role. He's been posting about being in the gym all summer. I think 
he watched LeBron play and then went to the gym at like midnight because he was so fired up after a game this postseason. What have you kind of seen um, from him kind of taking on a leadership role this offseason? Yeah, Nathan, I, I, our kids have, again, I uh, I will have more complaints about how we play and how good we are as we get closer to the competition, but I have no complaints with how hard they've worked. I, I just don't. Um, Devin is a good example, um, but our, our, they've all worked hard. Uh, I honestly think that the combination of being able to be in the gym on their own, uh, as well as sometimes with us, the NBA playoffs being on TV and exclusively on television, I think the combination of that has sort of kept our guys away from uh, being socially out there and running the risk of getting COVID and so on and so forth. I mean, look, we our kids have done amazingly well, which means they've had great discipline to, you know, to watch the games on TV and be in the gym and strength train and try to eat better and gain some weight. Um, Devin has been, Devin's done well. Um, obviously, uh, he's a very hot shooter. Had some big games for us, you know, LSU at home, South Carolina at home, Tennessee. Um, his making, his, sh his shot making ability with his lengths, a factor. He's really good in transition, both offensively and defensively, because he can play above the rim. He's going to make you go ooh and ah sometimes. Um, and I think the other thing he's done fairly well here recently is he's begun to be somewhat patient in the sense that uh, he's not forcing the action. Um, if he's got a probe and he's got an opportunity with some advantage, disadvantage, rather than forcing the action, if he doesn't have it, he'll give it to the point guard and we'll run something else. And that's really good. As you put the ball in his hands and say, be more aggressive, who will take the ball when you put it in your hands and force it down somebody's throat and make a bad play or a bad decision or force something because they, they're glad that the ball's getting in their hands versus try it. And if they don't have the advantage because the defense kept them in front or did something, don't turn it over, don't force it, get it back to the point guard. You may not touch it, that, that position. And Devin's done a pretty good job uh, with that. I think he's also got a chance to be a really good defender if he stays focused and uses his speed, athleticism, and his length. Our next, next question comes from Josh Vitale. Obviously, you've heard a ton about Sharif over the past few years while you're recruiting him, but what have you seen out of him since he's been on campus and in your gym? You know, Josh, I, hey, by the way, I talked to a guy from uh, San Francisco yesterday about Isaac. He said, you guys went to school together. Are you buddies? Yeah, Connor. He was, uh, we were sports editors together in Maryland. That's what he said. So I just passed that along to you. Uh, he sends his regards. Um, I think one of the things that gets lost about Sharif is uh, – and I don't want to say this to be critical, um, and he may not like it when I say it, and I may not be exactly accurate, but when he was a freshman at McEachie High School, my guess is he was about 5'9", 125 pounds soaking wet. Um, he is a self-made player. He is a grinder. He is a gym rat. Uh, very much like Jared Harper did, he is working really hard to – grow that body and he looks differently than he did in high school even right now um okay so now let's say what is he six one what cody six one, the MF, uh, so if he's six one 180 maybe he wasn't 125 but i can't imagine he was much more i'm just telling you you talk about a guy that's worked really hard in the gym in the weight room you know working on his game so on and so forth um i think at first he came in I think he was deferring a little bit, trying to get everybody involved. And then over a period of time, as he began to understand the offense, you know, realized that for his team to win, he needed to be more aggressive offensively. He's a scoring point guard. Um, uh, I will oftentimes compare to Jared because you guys remember Jared. But I would say he is ahead of Jared as a freshman but he is not Jared Harper yet, you know, because we remember Jared as a junior. Um, but I'll tell you, one of the things that he does really well, he's probably a better interior passer than Jared, and he actually can score at the rim making tough twos better than Jared. Jared developed incredible range from three. I think Sharif's going to be close to that, but he's not there yet. Uh, Jared um, had a great understanding of our offense and timing and spacing and reading ball screens and 
and things like that. That's something that obviously Shreve is working on. He's got to be brilliant in both ball screen offense and ball screen defense. Um, been a great teammate, you know, been a, been a, been a leader. Uh, he's a very, very, doesn't like to lose. And he's, and he's really, really competitive out there. So um, we have got good competition in every position. Uh, as we start practice right now, I've had enough practices where in a normal year, let's just even say last year, I had a much better idea last year at this time who my starting five would be than I do this year. By virtue of the fact that I had five or six guys last year that were head and shoulders above the rest. That is not the case this year. Now, that could be good news or bad news. The good news is we got a lot of parity. The good news is we've got good competition. The bad news is we might not have anybody that's as good as we had last year in those top five or six. I don't know that. But I can tell you the competition is much, much closer. So I do think the good news is we, we won't drop off a lot when we go to the bench. And so I think this is a team that I will definitely play nine or 10 bodies. All right, I got time for a few more. Our next one is a follow-up from Mark Murphy. Yeah, you talked about your two uh, true freshman guards. Could you talk about your other three true freshmen, how they're doing? Um, so I talked about Sharif and I talked about uh, Justin. The other freshmen would be Chris Moore, JT Thor, and uh, Dylan Caldwell. Uh, so Chris Moore is a six foot five uh, uh, kind of play two, three, four, five player. Um, Gus hasn't seen him yet in person, but when Gus sees him, I think he's going to try to recruit him to be a defensive end or, or some sort of a linebacker because he's built just like those guys. Um, and uh, he's a tough kid from West Memphis, Arkansas. Uh, just a glue when it comes to wanting to learn. He's in the toughest position of any of the freshmen because I'm going to try to play him at the three, which is the two and the three, and I might play him at some four, which is the four and the five. So as a freshman, he's got to know four positions, every position of a point guard. That's really hard to do. But because he is versatile, it's, it's actually holding him back from any one position, but it's going to make him ultimately more valuable and a better player. A productive around the basket, productive getting downhill, guard multiple positions, a uh, very powerful player. Um, JT Thor uh, came in at about 195. He's up to about 205 right now. I hope to get him closer to two, 208 or 210 by the time the season starts. I get my guess he'll play at 205. Uh, so obviously he's long and lean. He's got a great basketball body, uh, but he'll be giving away a lot of weight if he plays the four position for us. Uh, he's a clear stretch four man, left-handed, great range, uh, can get to the basket really quick first step. Um, decent job of finishing, great free throw shooter, got a great three-point stroke, uh, uses his length defensively. He's a, he's a, he's a really good pro product. Um, and, um, you know, he is, uh, um, He's going to be a really good player. The question is just how quickly is he going to get there? Terrific talent. Um, Dylan Caldwell could wind up being one of the steals of the draft uh, in the sense that he is 6'11", 260 pounds, and he moves, he moves as well as any 6'11", 260 pounder. Um, he moves like the best of them. I'm not saying he's better than the rest, but I mean, for a big man, he runs. He moves his feet. He gets open. He, he can handle the ball a little bit. He shoots it a little bit. I think he's got really, I think he's got great upside. Great upside. Um, uh, you know, terrific student athlete, terrific human being. Uh, I really like the character of my team um, very much so. And we're going to need to be able to have some of that character because we're going we're gonna to be challenged. Um, the only guy before you go, I'll, I'll just break down. I'm, I'm going to give one. I'm going to give a little bit of props to one of my players. Jalen Williams, just the last couple of weeks, I think has really come on um, and, and has played, played, uh, stepped up a little bit and created a little bit of separation uh, for himself. That wasn't the case prior to two weeks ago. Um, and so obviously just the update right now, Jalen, uh, he's had two really good weeks. 
um, and is back to the form we saw uh, at the end of last year. So I'm just excited about about where where he's at as well. A follow up from Thomas Murphy. Oh, what is your coaching philosophy going to be this year? Is this going to be a more offensive or defensive driven team compared to previous years? And then can we expect the usual full court press with all the quick darts you'll have this season? Yeah. I, you know, Thomas, I don't really, I really don't know. Um, yeah, we're going to be a fat. We look, I like to play fast. We're going to push the break. Uh, we're going to do some forms of, of, of pressing. Um, I do, I do like us in transition. Um, uh, but I think a lot of that's going to depend on the opponent. If going fast gives us a better chance to win, then I'm going to go fast. If, if slowing it down a little bit gives us a, lets us be more competitive. I don't know that we're going to be good enough to dictate tempo. You know, your best teams, your experienced teams, your most talented teams, they could dictate tempo. I think this team uh, might have to uh, react to the tempo of the opponent. We have a follow-up from Bill Cameron. Uh, another thing that uh, you, you don't mind is, is, uh, is shooting the threes. Who at this point, I know it's early, but I mean, who at this point do you feel the most confident in, uh, in, in, in uh, being your long distance guys? Well, I, I think we got a bunch of guys that can shoot it. I really do. Uh, in fact, we have, we have more guys that can shoot it than can't. I, I think with, I have 12 guys on scholarship. Um, obviously, my five men, Dylan and, 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 and Baba Tunde, uh, would be the least experienced facing and shooting. Um, uh, and yet we're working to add that to their game. Um, they will both be shooting big men at some point. I don't know if it'll be this year but it's absolutely going to be in their repertoire at some point in their career. So um, uh, right now it is, uh, it's good because you got to guard, you got to guard at least four in the perimeter when they're out there. And sometimes you might have to guard five and sure would be beneficial to the way the game is being played and officiated in the spacing. If I can put five guys on the floor that I'm willing to let take that shot. All right, MVP, our final question will come from Philip Marshall. Bruce, this is kind of off topic. What, what has, uh, has Sonny Smith meant to you just being around the program uh, during your time here? Yeah, I, Phil, I'm gonna, I want to thank you for just getting off topic on that for a second. And um, this being my first press conference, uh, I want to talk about um, Coach Dye and I want to talk about um, – Sonny, for a second, if you'll bear with me. Sure. Um, you know, Auburn lost uh, a part of its soul when we lost Coach Dye. Um, I don't know that um, how many men uh, have the opportunity to be synonymous with an athletic program um, in so many ways as Coach Dye. If it was good for Auburn, it was good for Auburn. That's all he cared about. Man, he loved Auburn, um, and he was great for Auburn. And uh, I don't think you can even begin to measure the loss on our on our coaches, on our fan base, on our administration, on our university leadership, on our board of trustees. Um, and um, one of the one of my personal professional accomplishments was getting to know Coach Dye and in some small way earning his respect. Um, I will rank that right up there if I, if I was able to, and I, I think I did, uh, as one of my greatest accomplishments. Um, he was a coach's coach. He was a man's man, and I miss him. Um, um, which then leads me to Sonny. Um, those are different guys. Um, when you're outside of Auburn, Alabama, um, and you mentioned the, the name Sonny Smith in the world of college basketball, eyes open, eyebrows raised, ears perk up. Sonny Smith enjoys a much more of a national respect as a basketball coach and what he did for his career, partly at Auburn, but also at some other stops. Um, an, you know, just an incredible coach, teacher, clinician, um, you know, coached here during one of our greatest runs in Auburn basketball history. And for Sonny 
to, you know, he could have gone back to Tennessee and retired. He could have gone to VCU uh, and, and, and Virginia area and, 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 and finished up. Instead, he came to Auburn. He came back to Auburn. This is where he wanted to call home. And um, to have Sonny on the call, uh, to also, you know, have been able to, Sonny, for my first three years here, was patient. Um, because we, the first couple of years, we weren't competitive. We played hard, but we weren't competitive. Um, you know, and, and, uh, and it took, took year three to, before we could become even competitive. Sonny never, ever budged when it came to watching us at practice, hearing the teaching, studying over studying, knowing what the competition was, and saying, this is, this is happening. He, he saw it happen. He knew it was going to happen. He told you before it happened that it would happen. He did. If you guys, you, you guys think about that. And so um, having him around um, and being able to be one of those people that are able to deliver, you know, part of the communication. Um, he hasn't been at practice this year. Obviously for COVID, we haven't had any, anybody in practice. My practices are always open. Of course, they're all closed now because of COVID. Um, so I miss not seeing Coach Smith, but, but he came to a lot of practices. And it wasn't just so that he could prepare to get on the radio and, and talk about the team. He did it because he loved the game. He loved Auburn basketball. And he, was a, and he was a really good supporter of our student athletes and our coaches.